Welcome back to part 2 of everything you missed in Pixar's Toy Story 4. If you haven't seen part 1, go watch it first. The contest is over though for that video, and this is our winner! Congratulations! If you didn't win, you can try again in today's video. Find these 5 easter eggs and comment where they are and include your Instagram name in your comment and follow me on Instagram for your chance to win your very own signature collection, Space Aliens. Warning, they may worship you while you're sleeping. Our journey continues to find more easter eggs in Toy Story 4. We already found over 40 million easter eggs in part 1 of everything you missed. Confirmed. But we found even more and the show starts now. <laughs> Just like last time, remember if you haven't seen the movie yet. Spoiler ahead, don't complain or you'll end up dead. Let's start where we left off and that's at the carnival. One of the Pixar's most loved couples of all time are probably Carl and Ellie from Up. If you recall, Ellie was a tour guide at the zoo while Carl was a balloon salesman. If you look in the carnival, you will see Carl's balloon cart floating around in a few of the spots. Pixar's been doing the high five jokes lately and we saw one in Incredibles 2. Now, Winter Combat Carl Jr. can't seem to get a high five. But if you watch till after the credits end, like till the end ends, you will see a post credit scene with Duke Kaboom doing one of his cool little stunts, doing to the eye what the Pixar lamp usually does. And once he lands his stunt, the Winter Combat Carl Jr. runs out of the scene and gives him his beloved high five. Yes. If you look at the Ferris wheel, it has a red star on the back of the seats, and that's not just a coincidence. It's a red star surrounded by yellow with a blue stripe. Pixar ball. If you look behind the throw-up ride, you will see one of the cows from Cars. Some of the prizes you can win at the carnival are a rocket ship with a Pixar-inspired sticker, or a blow-up star full of stars, just like La Luna, or even a miniature guitar from Coco with the skeleton on it and all. In Bonnie's room, we have a lamp that makes stars glow on the wall. This is a reference back to Andy. This symbolizes in a way of passing the torch giving Bonnie the new watch over all the toys. That's also probably why at the end we see a bunch of stars in the sky. Because now they're free. In the back of the alley behind the antique shop we find a shipping box that came from Ship It. What? Maybe Granny unknowingly purchased stolen merchandise from Ron the manager at the Sleep Well Motel. There's also some soda cans in the milk crate by the dumpster that came from Monsters University. But if you watch very carefully in the scene when the cat crashes into the dumpster you will see the soda can glitches through the milk crate. Oops. If they had more light in the alley it's possible we could see more easter eggs here. But thankfully the carnival is plenty well lit and the lights out there are powered by Kalachi generators. The director of photography is Jean-Claude Kalache. Kalache? Kalache? I'm sorry. If you remember my video about Bugs Life, you might recognize that this can here of low-fat lard is the same can that they used to make the Tough Bugs bar. Then check out this dragon zone. It has Spyro the dragon on it. Okay, I'm kidding. It's Figment from Epcot Journey into Imagination. Use your imagination, people. Then they threw a joke at us at the cotton candy stand. One of the light-up signs on the side of it says no polyester added. Polyester may look like cotton candy, but definitely is not something that you find in cotton candy. We have a 2319. <laughs> Warning, stop right there, stop. We have a low speed Easter egg chase. I repeat, a low speed Easter egg chase. When the Tri-County RV is trying to make a break for the carnival, if you look at the cop car, you will see unit number 2319. 2319! Send in backup. Send in backup. That's the same code from Monsters, Inc. And if you don't know what the code means, I'm gonna have to write you a ticket. Another thing that carnivals seem to have a reputation for, besides having rigged games, is that the food is like airport food expensive. If you read the sign here, you will see the water bottles are $10. And naturally, it has no refunds. But to be honest, I'm perfectly okay with that because we need to stop using one-time used water bottles. Of course, I know you probably wouldn't be buying the water bottle unless you were dying of thirst. Freeze! I'm thirsty. Yep, that's right, Frozone's in Toy Story 4. Look at this kid in the background, you can see he's carrying a Frozone action figure. Where is my super suit? Uh, one good thing is the famous Chinese takeout restaurant is somewhere nearby. We know this because if you look in the trash can when it gets knocked over from the high speed chase, you will see a Chinese takeout box spill out of it. Also, Grandma has one of the famous boxes in her fridge. Speaking of Granny, she's surrounded by Easter eggs. Her awkward bathtub scene has a lot of eerie similarities to the bathtub scene in The Shining. I know that's creepy though, and a weird coincidence, but her house number is also 237. Okay, right? Uh -huh. 237 is the same room number from The Shining that you definitely don't want to go into. 
Not sure these are all connecting to The Shining? <laughs> Don't worry, there's more. For the other one, we'll have to finally go into The Second Chance Antiques. When Woody and Forky first meet the villain, the music playing on the record player is from The Shining. Oh, what service? But the record player is definitely not from Up. Uh, I checked. You can tell because the wood construction doesn't match. It's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. Now that we're finally in the antique store, take a deep, big breath of stale, musky air. Because there's a lot of Easter eggs in here. Gabby Gabby was modeled after a famous doll back in the day called Chatty Kathy. And yeah, she looked just as creepy back then as she does now. Let's play house. They call right now and we'll double the offer. Her henchman, Benson, resembles Slappy from the Goosebumps, but Benson was actually named after Eric Benson, who was involved in several Pixar movies. Dinoco is splashed all over the place inside the shop as well. We have a neon sign up here of Dinoco. And I know it's a little bit hard to see because the neon is shut off, so let's turn it on. Movie magic, isn't it great? We also see a Dinoco gas pump. The calendar on the counter is a Dinoco Thomasville Speedway calendar. If you remember, that's where Cruz Ramirez helped Lightning McQueen learn how to drive again. There's also a speaker from the same track over here on the floor. And then we have a Dinoco air pump. Then of course we have what gasoline is made from. Arlo the Good Dinosaur. <laughs> this little spot is a treasure chest full of Easter eggs. We also have Becky's bucket from Finding Dory. Becky. This giant box says Pixar on it, but it's not just a box or the earlier logo that Pixar used to use. It's actually an old computer. That's right, Pixar used to sell computers for a living. They may have been cool and epic at their time, but nowadays these same computers are dumber than your smartphone. Does this bear look familiar up here though? It's the same bear carving from Brave with the fishes that go in circles. While we're already running down the hallway, we should point out some of the other Easter eggs we have here. Recognize this epic three-story dollhouse? That's Ken's house from Toy Story 3. Then right above it, we have the volcano from Pixar short Lava. Speaking of lava, when they're getting ready to set up Duke Kaboom for the biggest crash of his life, if you look at the stack of films, you might recognize the names. Lava, of course, is what we just talked about. Then Knick Knack is a Pixar short. <laughs> Then Lifted is another Pixar short, and that one's about a rookie alien that's trying to learn how to abduct a farmer. And obviously the alien's not very good at it. Then if you look on the shelf here, you can see the same windmill that we see in Lifted. Redstream is another Pixar short from 1987. Speaking of Redstream, the unicycle from that short can be seen over here. But let's go back to the projector reels. The last one is Ed's hand. Haven't heard of that Pixar short yet? It's a reference to Ed Catmull, who was the former president of Pixar and Walt Disney Animation Studios. And his first animation that he ever made was a computer animated hand. This hand here could also be a reference to the same hand video. Where's our high five now? Then this next one I can't verify with my own eyeballs because the image is way too small, but according to Josh Cooley and Mark Milson, the film strip is actually the newsreel from the beginning of Pixar's Up. Pretty cool. Survey time! If you go back to the main area of the Second Chance Antiques and look at the top of the dresser that the red unicycle from Red Street is leaning up against, you are going to see a bell. My question is this, do you think this bell is the same one that killed Ernesto de la Cruz or is it a random bell? Speaking of bells, this one is a little bit hard to prove but I think I know where this bell on the counter is from. No, not Breaking Bad. It's from Sleepwell Motel in the Toy Story of Terror. One that we can see with our own eyeballs and that there's no controversy about is right under the shelf with all the movies we see a napkin that says Wally Bees and it has a bee on it. This is clearly a reference to Pixar short The Adventures of Andre and Wally Bee. To avoid detection by the human, Woody strikes a pose holding the phone. This of course is the same pose that Mickey has on his Mickey phone. We also see that same pose in a Goofy movie. Uh, uh. Oh. But look what the lady is holding. That's a butter turner thing. And it's from The Witch's Cottage in Brave. Now let's check out the pinball machine because everybody wants a pinball machine in their basement, right? How cool is that? You might recognize the tiki's are the same tiki's from the fish tank in the dentist office in Finding Nemo. And it even has a Mount Wanahakawuki. Mount Wanahakalugi. And you see the sign up here? It's that annoying song, Triple Dent Gump. Inside the pinball machine, we find more. Tenny is the star of Picture Short, Ten Toy. These toys are old Star Wars toys of Obi-Wan Kenobi and the alien that got its arm chopped off in the bar. 
And if you watch closely, you will see the toy Obi-Wan cuts off the arm of the toy alien. This is Franklin the Eagle, but if he's supposed to be the same one from Small Fry, then they messed up because that is not how he looks. In Small Fry, he's riding around in the Constitution. In Gabby Gabby's home base, look at the plates on the top of the shelf. They're all shoutouts to other Pixar movies. This fancy white plate, for example, with gold trim and little golden dots, it even has the gold G on it for gusto, just like the ones in his restaurant in Ratatouille. The guitars on the blue plate are a perfect match of the decorative paper in the beginning of Coco. Then this plate has a giant sword in it with a weird pattern behind it. That weird pattern is owned by none other than Merida from Bray. Then there's this place. It traveled all around the world. No! Remember, gents and gentlemen, lads, adventure is out there. And in this case, it was an up. Another easter egg to up that's not in the form of a plate though is the airplane flying above the store. That's one of the planes that the dogs were flying in the final battle in Up. Three, two, checking in. Red leader standing by. And that serving tray behind Woody is the same tray that a dog used to serve Carl champagne. Or wine, I don't know, I'm not a very big drinker. Probably my favorite Pixar short in all the world is Jerry's Game. And I have to say, I was pretty happy to see he made it into the antique shop. Did you see him? We get to see his chessboard leaning against a dresser behind Bonnie's bag. Then we see some of the chess pieces from the short made it into Toy Story 2. And we can see that it also made it into Toy Story 4 because they're in a little bowl on the table. Then the icing on the cake is we see Jerry himself grinning after he beat himself. If you ask me, that's quite cool. And I'm gonna say it, I think Jerry and Granny would make an awesome couple. Hashtag make Jerry and Granny a thing, Pixar. You know what's even cooler than that though? A snow globe. <laughs> Literally cooler. Okay, well it's the same globe that we see in Cars and Toy Story that time forgot, and of course where it originated from is Pixar Short Knickknack. The key to the city that was given to Mr. Incredible is just hanging on a nail behind the register. Then the fork that you see on the wall here, that fork is from Gusto's office in Ratatouille. A lot of things in the store came from Ratatouille, and more specifically the office. The slotted spoon hanging on the back of the cabinet is the same one used in the kitchen. It just aged a little bit. I mean, come on, it's an antique shop. Don't like the fact that it looks aged? Well, then there's another one just for you, a brand new one. That purple hat on the shelf? That was worn by a customer in Gusto's four-star restaurant. And the pepper grinders? Ooh. Same place. Then there's some pots and pans from the chef's kitchen. And this cheese sticker was turned into a giant sign. The hat rack there is straight out of the corner of Gusto's office. This teapot is from the old lady's house. And that rolling pin is from the old lady's house. Then the birdcage is from her attic. You know as much stuff that we keep seeing coming out of this old lady's house and the fact that Ratatouille is kind of an old movie? It seems like there might have been an estate sale. I mean, she was kind of old. The chair on the floor here is the same one from the restaurant in Ratatouille. You can tell by the unique upholstery on the arm with the little rivets or buttons or whatever you call it. I'm not a seamstress. I don't know. Have you seen the short Presto? It's basically about a magician and a rabbit and a magic hat. But a lot of stuff in that video magically made its way into the movie. We have a hat rack. Yeah, I said it, it's another hat rack. Another cage. Then when the magician's act goes terribly wrong, the musicians start playing hillbilly music. And the banjo is right here. And that thing is a washboard and that's what they used to wash clothes with in the oldie days. And we can see it made its way into the movie as well, right there. Then look at the antique sign hanging above the sidewalk. Notice that hand pointing? Yep, you guessed by now, it's not just a sign, it's an easter egg. That hand was also in the credits in Presto. The wooden ladder that we see in Presto also makes a pretty good shelf to store stuff on. Then there's the magician's hat. If you look by the sewing machine, you will see that that is not the same hat. But that's how you find easter eggs, gents and gentlets. So you spend way too much time trying to find every single little detail that doesn't look like it would have a mate, and you try to find its mate. But if you look at the sewing machine, that is an easter egg. It's a Zimmerman sewing machine. This is a reference to the art manager, Margot Coughlin Zimmerman. And we all know if you're looking for a diamond in a rough, it's always gonna be locked away safely behind the glass. In Gabby Gabby's cabinet and in the cabinet that holds the register, you can see a diamond. Does it look familiar? Well, it should. It's the same diamond ring from Wally that Wally threw away just to save the box. Some of the jewelry in the display also looks like it came out of the jewelry store in Incredibles that was next to the burning building that just had to come down. Building was coming down anyway. I'm not sure about this necklace though. It may have been modeled after the seashell that was used to warn when Hopper and his gang were coming to the ant hill. But this seashell in Gabby Gabby's cabinet is definitely not that seashell. And that purple jewelry box showed up in Riley's imagination of what her new bedroom could look like. The Pixar short The Blue Umbrella was about a red and blue umbrella. And we can find those two umbrellas right here. Kissing. 
Then we advertise grape soda again with a vintage sign over here, you know, Carl's Pen. Grape soda was also all over the place in Toy Story, like in Buzz Lightyear's commercial. And we already found Ken's dollhouse, but if you look over on the shelf by the window, you can see one of the clothing racks packed full of clothes. Another thing that we find from Sunnyside Daycare is the board games. That's right there in the Second Chance Antique Shop as well. And right there we have a model of the Pizza Planet rocket ship. And this one is no stretch of the imagination. That giant golden starburst hanging thing up there is from the mansion in Incredibles 2. And of course, this right here is Elastigirl's motorbike from Incredibles 2. It's possible that maybe that cocktail glass is from their little party that they had with the little hidden Pixar ball that I missed. But then this album has the famous A113 on it and that is not questionable. Another record that we see that can be found in McGill's hideout is this one. And unlike this record player, this one is Carl's from Up. We see all the dogs playing cards in this painting. And yeah, I know Charles Bunce is there too. Like I said, all the dogs. Of course, Alpha is an alpha dog, so he gets his very own picture as well right here. In the movie op, Carl and Ellie had a bunch of blimps over the baby crib. Then after finding out they couldn't have any more kids, they kept one of them above the fireplace. Over here in the antique shop, we see that blimp. And then there's another one over here. Another Easter egg we see back by the windows is the captain's hat. To me, it looks exactly like the captain's hat from the Axiom in Wally. -E. Then if we look through the other side of the window from the outside, you can see an amp and a guitar over here in the corner. Look familiar? That's Andy's amp and guitar from Toy Story 3. We know this is for sure because if you look closely you can tell there are several stickers and they are all in the exact same spot. Now you might have seen this but when they first dive into the antique shop if you look on the floor down by the register you can see the Pixar ball. Recognize that purple beanbag chair? Bonnie sat in that when she was playing video games in Toy Story that time forgot. And Riley also had it in her bedroom in Inside Out. Some people think that this model car up here is Lizzie from Cars. Lizzie has a lot of junk in her trunk, if you know what I mean. Can you move over? I want to get a look at that silly hot rod. But this car right here, it doesn't even have a trunk. No, that's not the car. But yes, it's an Easter egg. It was just a random car that was driving by in a random scene and up. A car that was from Cars, though, was Flo. If you look right here on the shelf, you can see her clear as day. Remember poor Nemo had all of his siblings eaten by a barracuda? Well, thankfully, some good old fishermen hunted him down, killed him, then stuffed him and shoved him on his wall. We know this because we see him on the wall right there. Then the Googles at the Diver War in Finding Nemo can be seen when they first go into the shop, hanging out over on the shelf right here. Later on, we get another more clear view as well. And now that the video is paused, you probably clearly see sitting right next to the Googles is a box of Casey Jr. cookies from Bugs Life. But wait, we're not done with the scene. Look up at the window display and you will see that's old man Carl's cane from Up. I don't want you to touch him! <laughs> then those bowling pins are probably the same ones from Wally's Clubhouse. The color that Dragon the Demon Cat is wearing also seems to be the exact same color from the circus tent in Bugs Life. And if you look closer, you can see the little bedazzled jewels on it. See another pattern here? Dog good, cat bad. Speaking of Wally, we have some Wally souvenir cups in the glass display right there. Another Pixar short that they scattered throughout the store is props from One Man Band. When the two musicians lost the little girl's quarter, they felt bad and gave her a violin. Here we can see that same violin. And we know it's the same one because it has the same markings on it. Then I think they call this piece a clarinet. But don't sue me, I'm not a musician. Just correct me in the comments nicely. Either way, we can see it made its way on top of the shelf up here. Then we can find his trombone and his trumpet hanging out in the ceiling. Or maybe the trombone and trumpet were actually from Incredibles 2. You know, at the ribbon cutting ceremony. Check out this dragon though. You think maybe they're stretching to Disney trying to make their own Mushu? Well, they're not. That's a dragon from the Pixar short, Bow, Bao, Bo. I don't know. How do you say that? Now let's steer down to this handle. Does that look familiar? I'll give you a second. Time's up. It's the same coffee grinder that Carl used to steer his house in Up. And that huge painting on the wall above his bed that Ellie painted for him, well we can see that in a miniature version on the shelf. Remember the PJ's pop on the wall outside? Well there's another sign on the inside. There's also a sign for the Poultry Palace from Small Fry. That's also where they stopped off on their road trip. If you forgot that by now, you might want to go to a psychiatrist. It's hard to confirm this next one because it's so dark, but this record label here is probably one of the record hits that Ernesto de la Cruz stole from Hector. We see a few of these gold records on his office wall, but unfortunately the stickers don't appear to match up perfectly. Another easter egg that's worth a scream is the Scream Canister from Monsters, Inc. This next one I can't decide, so you're gonna have to tell me what you think. 
In Toy Story 2, we see that Woody's collection has a pretty custom lamp made from a cowboy boot. And I think that this lamp right here is that cowboy boot. But I know what you're saying, it doesn't have Woody's face on it and all the decorations, but that's part of the problem. See, in Jessie's flashback, we see she also has the same exact lamp that Woody has, only with her face on it instead of his. So, is this Jessie's lamp just repainted? Or Woody's lamp just repainted? Or just a random lamp? And don't you dare say that's a random lamp! But check this out, look at the wagon on the shelf. That's Bing Bong's wagon from Inside Out. It even has the broom strapped to it still. Then hiding at the bottom here is the toy truck that Lotto from Toy Story 3 used to get around. Then look at this, this is one of the spirit guides from Coco. And maybe, just maybe, that that little green thing is the spirit guide that was on the family's ofrenda. We also have a Monsters University pennant hanging on the wall, and a Monsters University bullhorn hanging in the sea of lights. Recognize this lantern? It's the scary lantern from Mater and the Ghost Light. And lastly, there's license plates all over the store, and some of them are recycled from different parts of Cars movies. Thank you to all my members here for supporting the channel, and if you want to help the channel survive, share this video with all your friends, let me know what movie you want to talk about next, and subscribe so you don't miss our next adventure, but remember most importantly of all, Jensen and Jenlets, Remember, share a smile, they are contagious! Hey, share a smile, they're contagious. Can you imagine a day without smiling? Whew, that would be outrageous. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with Crazy Nate. Make sure to leave a thumbs up if he left you feeling great. Have fun and we'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, 2319. Now we got a troll in the comments. Okay, over.